Ahoy! Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another Intel report. This is the Command & Conquer Rival series where I spend hours thinking of a witty intro gag only for you to forget it 10 seconds after I've delivered it. This channel is supported solely through ad revenue and my amazing crew of Patreons. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to you guys as without you this channel would not be possible. If you'd like to join my Patreon, the link is on screen now. Of course, you can also help by hitting like, subscribing, sharing this video with your friends, and letting the ads play out. Before we begin, I would also like to give a humongous shout out to Yukinera, who begged me for this Intel report and has assisted in supplying footage for it. Today, we are looking at the Nod Inferno. The Inferno is a heavy bomber aircraft based on scaled up Banshee technology. It's equipped with a single high-yield incendiary bomb capable of annihilating enemy ground units as well as igniting enemy positions for a significant length of time. Built from the air tower, the Inferno is a slow-moving bomber that drifts across the battlefield with impending menace. Once it reaches its target, the Inferno drops its incendiary payload and blasts the two tiles directly in front of it for heavy damage in one of the most satisfying impacts in Rivals. This immediate damage is enough to obliterate most enemy infantry and light to medium vehicles like pit bulls, shatterers and slingshots. Beyond the immediate damage, the two tiles hit also burn for a few seconds afterwards, dealing continual damage to anything on them. This means that anything not blown to smithereens by the initial impact will quickly roast in the lingering flames that give the Inferno its name. As long as these flames still linger, any other units attempting to cross them will be damaged and this will melt infantry and light vehicles at an astonishing rate, essentially blocking off those hexes for the duration of the firestorm. Do be aware that the Inferno's blast will hit everything on those hexes. If there are multiple units passing over the same hex, they will be hit, and this does not discriminate between friend and foe. I have witnessed plenty of times when an overzealous Inferno has obliterated an enemy unit, and the overblast has taken out friendly units, even harvesters. Don't be that guy. Once the Inferno has dropped its payload, it must wait a short time to reload. During this vulnerable time, the Inferno moves faster, assisting it in retreating to safety. Use this opportunity to draw the Inferno back across your own units in order to block any counters your opponent may send in an attempted revenge. Countering Infernos is a job best performed by aircraft. Hammerheads, Phantoms, Banshees and Talons will take them out quickly as the Inferno is utterly helpless against them. If you have no aircraft in your deck, then taking down an Inferno becomes a significantly more difficult task, but certainly still doable. Stealth tanks, pit bulls and attack bikes can deal with them, though bikes and pit bulls are best used in numbers and preferably try to catch the Inferno whilst it's reloading. It's worth noting that even missile and laser squads do a decent amount of damage to Infernos but due to their slow moving nature and how easily they'll die in the flames, I wouldn't recommend infantry counters unless you're running zone troopers or cyborgs and again can catch the Inferno reloading. So with all of that considered, what decks do Infernos go well in? Now, there are two variants that I can suggest here. The first is an old favourite of mine used originally by Alicia Destiny. This deck is unusual in that it opens not with your usual 10 cost units, but instead with a buggy. You need to understand how to counter a basic rush to run this deck well. Open with your Harvester, then build a buggy to go scouting. Even though they only have a vision of two, buggies can make decent scouts and will wreck most infantry. And Cyberwheels and Wardogs pose very little threat to them. They also do astonishingly well against aircrafts like drones, tan talons and venoms, which some opponents apparently do like to scout with, I've discovered. Attack bikes are here if you need to deal with enemy vehicles like pit bulls or if your opponent is sending more intense air threats. Remember that the buggies and bikes can twin together to pull down aircraft prey. Finally, for the War Factory, Scorpion tanks give us some proper ground punch for removing more dedicated ground vehicles. The Hand of Nod traditionally contained flame troopers, and these do still work very nicely for dealing with enemy missile squads. But if you have the capability of running Fanatics, these are cheaper, still deal with missile squads well, but also have the chance to buff up your other units. Either works, but Fanatics can give you an edge if you're skilled in using them. 
finally we have the air tower. Here the inferno is our main goal. Get this out onto the battlefield and start blowing stuff up. Timely harvester kills with scorpions or attack bikes can help you get the first inferno out, and if you can blow their harvester with an inferno again, well, you can start pumping multiple out. The final death uh, deck slot can ultimately be either phantoms or stealth tanks. In this deck I personally prefer phantoms, as they are better at keeping the skies clear for your infernos, but stealth tanks are able to come out that little bit earlier and are slightly cheaper in the long run. You just need to be pretty skilled to micro them into the most potent threats to your inferno. Now I'd recommend Seth as a commander here, purely as his flame troopers are a great surprise to dump on your opponent. If your fanatics aren't quite cutting their infantry down fast enough, or if you're sitting at max population cap, the drill pod is an emergency delivery of a barbecue squad. Also great for stealing distant pads at the last second, and is there anything more satisfying in rivals than a last second missile flip? Well, maybe an inferno multi-kill, but then this deck supplies both. This deck does have a couple of variants too. Some people like to swap the buggies for cyber wheels. This gives a simpler and more familiar opening, but then lacks the ability to deal with drones effectively. If you're not encountering drones often, this is a viable swap. The flame troopers or fanatics can also be swapped for chem buggies, but note that this does mean that most of your deck is now the vehicle type. As such, you may struggle against mohawks, banshees, and orcas until you can move your stealth tanks or phantoms, and grenadiers and mutant marauders do pose a significant threat. Now the second deck is much weirder, as a 2-4 air deck, but it can definitely work if you're good with your micro. Here, militants form your opening unit, scouting the battlefield before your harvester comes out. Laser squads help deal with war dogs, cyber wheels, or other vehicle openers. From here, you can tech up into the air tower. Venoms allow you to hose down enemy infantry at a frightening rate. Laser drones deal with early ground vehicle threats and are terrifying against some tech units if used in numbers. Finally, the Phantom and Inferno twin for that final 1-2 punch. The Inferno bathes the ground in fire, and the Phantom keeps the air clear. Well, that brings us nicely to the featured replay section of the video, where we go over a replay using the Inferno. So in this particular replay, we have Zirius on the left-hand side running a variant of the War Factory Inferno deck up against Unit Ready from the StarCraft Alliance on the right hand side, running a 3-2-1 aggro deck uh, using Lang. Now Zirius comes straight out there with the militants, he spots those MG squads and gets straight in there, tries to cut them down as quick as he can. Unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna be quite enough in that time, and the second MG squad comes out. Unit Ready is clearly intending to put the pressure on here. Zirius knows what he's doing in these situations, though he is keeping his units cheap. He's just gonna keep at a distance, try and deal with that missile squad and stop that missile squad coming in to grab his harvester. Now ultimately, yes, he's losing each of those uh, militant squads, but they are only 10 cost each. He's mapping out the battlefield, getting a feel for what's going on, and have a look at those Tiberium costs. Ultimately, at this point in time, Unit Ready has spent a lot of Tiberium. Zirius is just saving it up so that he can shift up into, at this point, into the air tower. That Inferno comes out, he's quite happy to let go of that first missile because Unit Ready has covered the board in infantry and that infantry is going to suffer now as the Inferno comes out, but doof, down goes that damage. First MG squad has been cleared. I'm not entirely sure why the uh, why the scavengers come in. I'm thinking that's a bit of a miss micro, but again, but doof, down goes that Inferno shot. And you see here that Inferno is just cleaning out uh, that entire fortress, that Liang fortress that has been set up. This of course prompts unit ready to start bringing out the talents. The talents are going to be problematic, but believe it or not, as you can see here, the buggies actually do an amazing job at pulling those talents down quickly. Unit ready is stuck at this point. He has spent, he's invested so heavily early on in those, uh, in those mass infantry that the Inferno just cleared out. He is very behind on Tiberium. That second missile, therefore, this looks like it's going to go to Sirius. Boom! Down it goes. There comes the stealth tank just to clean up that, uh, clean up that, uh, that Talon. And the MG squads are back. The MG squads clearly unit ready is now adamant that he wants to try and uh, like get that fortress rebuilt. Zirius straight in there with the Inferno. That Inferno just needs to come one step forward. Yep, a quick boost to push it past, bullies that uh, talent out of the way, and damn, that fortress is gone again. 
Stealth Tank comes in, removes the Talon. Inferno swoops up, ready just to get back into position. And bye-bye, MG Squad. Xerius is just using those Infernos to deny any ground units the ability to actually stay on the board and contest anything. He waited early on, kept his costs low, saved up for those Infernos, and now is just doing the damage. Yep, sure, that Missile Squad can take out one Inferno. Um, hoping here it can take out the other one. There's not enough time. Xerius just stops him getting onto that middle platform and takes that third and final Missile. Well played to Xerius.